stage mothers, little league dads, dance moms. For any youth activity you can name, there are overzealous parents who push their kids ruthlessly toward success. These parents are often described as cutthroat because they will do whatever they think it takes to help their child get ahead. And why wouldn't they? Doesn't every parent want the best for their child? But there's a difference between wanting the best for your child and wanting your child to be the best. And there's a big difference between wanting your child to be the best and demanding that your child be the best. This week on Out of the Past, the Aquatots and the murder of Kathy Tongay. Russell G. Tongay was a man with dreams. He had been a competitive swimmer in his younger years, but he was never able to reach the level of success he desired. During World War II, he served a nondescript position in Miami as a pharmacist's mate in the Coast Guard. It seemed like he had missed his chance. But then he thought of a way to achieve the fame and fortune that had so far eluded him. When his son Russell Bubba Tongay Jr. was born in 1945, he immediately transferred his own aspirations onto him. He started experimenting with ways to train him to be a champion swimmer. He would take Bubba into the shower to get him familiar with the feeling of water on his skin, and even held him down in the bathtub water to train him for aquatic breathing. All while he was still an infant. Kathy came along two years later, and Tongay pushed her just like he did Bubba. Convinced they were both infant prodigies, Tongay started training them to do stunts. Tongay bragged that by the time Kathy was 10 months old, she could already swim 20 feet underwater. Distance swimming became one of the skills that tots were known for. Sources reported that the duo trained by swimming 400 meters a day before the age of two. By the time they were seven and five, Tongay was making them swim seven miles every morning before breakfast. Tongay began staging elaborate performances where people could come watch the tots as they swam. An event he organized in 1950 convinced him that his kids were indeed his meal ticket. At this event, Bubba, who was four years old, swam 22 miles of the Mississippi River to the finish line in St. Louis. His little sister Kathy swam five miles, and she was only two. People were astounded, to say the least. Most parents of toddlers won't even let them near water, let alone swim miles of one of the world's major rivers. The act he named Aquatots took off after this feat, and Tongay tried to come up with more ways his children could wow audiences. One of Bubba's signature moves was diving off a 33-foot high diving board with both his hands and feet bound. Remember, we're talking about a preschooler at this point. It's like tying up your child and throwing him off a cliff into the ocean, hoping they'll survive. Bubba risked his life with every performance. Tongay forced careers on these very young children. This guy was making his toddlers train like Olympic athletes, not because they wanted to, but because he craved the fame and fortune that would come with their success. Audience members became concerned about the appearance of the children. They looked, well, about as muscular as a severely malnourished child could possibly look. When people asked their father about their diet, he told them, I like to keep them lean. They swim better. He told the media that he only fed the children protein-rich baby food. Baby food. Can you imagine a five-year-old boy swimming 22 miles with nothing but mashed carrots and strained peas to fuel his body? These children were swimming miles a day on virtually no calories. It's honestly amazing that they lasted as long as they did. These children were swimming miles a day on virtually no calories. It's honestly amazing that they were able to make it as long as they did. Other than being unnaturally thin, other things about the children's appearance bothered audience members. The children always looked scorched from the sun as they trained outside all day. At one point in 1949, some women complained to the authorities that they saw Tongay slap his young daughter and rub a dirty rag in her face. 
By the time they were successful enough to travel for a European tour, Bubba was five and Kathy only four years old. After hearing about their success in distant swimming, the London Daily Mail offered a cash prize of $19,600, the equivalent of almost $200,000 today, if the tots swam in the English Channel. The swim across the English Channel is approximately 21 miles, but conditions can vary widely according to tide patterns. Only a small number of adults had completed the swim successfully. The idea of letting a five- and four-year-old attempt the swim was ludicrous to both the English and French governments, who forbade the attempt. In fact, the Home Office in London placed the Tongays under technical arrest when they arrived at the airport in order to prevent them from carrying out the stunt. Young Bubba reportedly brandished a toy pistol at immigration officials when they ordered the family to return home. The Tongays made some appeals and were able to stay in Europe for a few weeks but soon gave up their outrageous plan. Most citizens were relieved. Nobody wanted to see newsreel footage of them scooping a dead child's body from the bay. Well, I can't say nobody. Some people obviously wanted to see the kids attempt the challenge. So much that they were willing to put up money for it. That seems truly sick. These were young children. They should have been in school, playing with friends, and enjoying the idyllic dream of Eisenhower's America. Instead, they were treated like performing dogs and fed far worse. Even though the English Channel stunt was a bust, the publicity it generated did help Tongay land the Aquatots' biggest break when they returned to the States. A cameo appearance in the 1952 Esther Williams film, Skirts Ahoy. Williams was a movie star who came to fame through her swimming abilities. Her films featured large, Busby Berkeley-like synchronized swimming routines and elegant diving stunts. Bolstered by this taste of stardom, Tongay continued to push the children. They continued their grueling daily training schedule and were still fed nothing but baby food. The Tongays trained in a number of pools in addition to open ocean swimming. On the morning of May 6, 1953, Tongay took the children to train at the McFadden Doville Pool in Miami, Florida. This center had a number of diving boards at different heights. Tongay told his five-year-old daughter Kathy to climb the ladder to the highest platform. From there, the kindergartner was to practice her new stunt, a back one-and-a-half layout. That means she would execute a flip and a half with her body completely straight, landing in the water head slash arms first. Kathy jumped off the platform, which was 33 feet, about the height of a four-story building. She didn't rotate correctly and ended up belly flopping into the water at tremendous speed. Kathy cried and complained that her back hurt. Embarrassed by his five-year-old's emotional reaction to being hurt, Tongay left and took his kids to another pool where they often trained. Treasure Isle Pool. They began to train again, although the lifeguard at the pool expressed concerns about the bruises on Kathy's body. The five-year-old began to cry and said she didn't feel well. Eventually, she threw up. Tongay fed her a jar of baby food and told her to get back in the pool. Onlookers said she obeyed her father though there were tears in her eyes as she swam. Shortly after ending their training session for the day, Kathy began having convulsions. A few hours later, she was dead. Kathy was only 16 days away from her sixth birthday. After an autopsy, the medical examiner concluded that Kathy was in horrible condition, with bruises all over her body like she'd been repeatedly beaten. Tongay was arrested. In tears, he blamed himself, though he insisted that he had never laid a finger on Kathy. He claimed that all of the bruising came from her incident on the diving board. The coroner's office concluded that Kathy's cause of death was an infection from a ruptured intestine. She had been bleeding internally. Russell Tongay faced charges of second-degree murder. Witnesses who took the stand included a pool employee who'd seen Kathy hurt herself on that dive in the same way just a couple of days before her death. And a woman who saw Kathy crying to her father, saying that she didn't want to go. Her father made her dive anyway. 
One expert testified that given the spring of the platform, little Kathy's body had come crashing into the water at 43 feet per second. Nobody disagreed that Tongay was abusive and negligent. What the case contested was whether Kathy's death was caused by a diving mishap or repeated beatings from her father. Expert witnesses' conclusions were inconsistent, but in the end, the second-degree murder charge was dropped to manslaughter, and Tongay was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor. There were some who tried to argue that this was a tragic accident and that Tongay wasn't truly abusive. He simply wanted to instill a sense of resilience and competitive spirit in his children. But this defense falls apart when you learn that Bubba Russell Tongay Jr. was not the first Aquatot. There was another child before he was born. This was information I didn't learn until days into my research. Russell Tongay Jr., born 1944, only survived for about 18 months. An army doctor who worked at the case testified that Mrs. Tongay had told him her husband had been holding the baby in the bathtub trying to teach him to float. When the one-and-a-half-year-old got fussy, Tongay slapped him across the head. Mrs. Tongay would not testify to this in court, however. She told some story about the child falling down the stairs. The original Russell Tongay Jr. died at only 18 months from multiple brain hemorrhages. So, Tongay tried again, and for some reason was blessed with another child. He gave his next son the same name as his first, almost like a replacement. They weren't children to Russell. They were proxies. Russell Tongay Jr. would be an extension of himself. He needed to reuse the name, because success for Russell Tongay Jr. meant success for Russell Tongay. This story makes me unbelievably angry. Russell Tongay had no good intentions for his children. He saw them as cash cows. He tortured them daily by starving them, over-exercising them, and forcing them to do dangerous stunts. It's copyrighted material, so I can't put it in the video, but there will be links below to some old newsreels with the children. Russell Tongay did not emphasize form or safety in diving. Click on the links below and wait to watch Kathy dive, because it is truly kind of terrifying, because she really doesn't look like she knows what she's doing. She looked like she was about to have an accident right there on the newsreel. Even if the kids had fun, even if they loved the water, I can say with absolute certainty that their father showed absolutely no humanity toward his own flesh and blood in this endeavor. He murdered two of his children in pursuit of fame and fortune, and that is disgusting. And where was their mother during all of this? She appears in photographs with the family, but is not mentioned in any news source, except for the story about her first son's death. What was her role in the exploitation of the children? Did she contribute to the abuse? Did she just sit back and watch it happen? Was she scared for her own safety? Was she a victim herself? We have no information. Russell Tongay Jr., Bubba, recently retired from a career in lifeguarding. If you want to make a difference in the lives of children that are being abused, I recommend that you make a donation to Prevent Child Abuse America. They're a reputable organization, and your dollar will definitely make a difference in the life of a child. That's all for this week. If you enjoy our content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Out of the Past.